Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the Minecraft Emporium. In today's video, I'm going to be combining two of the things that seem to do well on this channel. The first is prisons, which get 10 times the amount of views as all of my other videos, and second are tutorials, which don't get as many views, but hey, I love making tutorials. And so what I'm going to do today is showcase for you a refined and more elegant system for a Minecraft prison inventory death clearing system. That was a bit of a mouthful, but I really want to explain to you really what the purpose of the system is. Because in all of the prison, or I should say the vast majority of the prison escapes that I've seen, whether it's been Zeus's vault, Hermes vault, Pandora's vault, Poseidon's vault, all of these different things, the vast majority have succeeded only because prisoners were able to gather in uh, materials and items into the chamber where they're being held. And what this system right here does is it prevents the items that are dropped from the player down below from ever being anywhere near where the player respawns. I'm going to be covering all of the mechanics and different design choices for each of the things, plus a material list for this build will be in the description, and I'll be giving you an in-depth tutorial. Watching all the way through is a great way to support the channel, and speaking of ways to support the channel, consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. I can tell you it will truly make my day. Other than that, let's hop into things. Hey, this is actually post-editing Alex here, and I wanted to uh, just clarify for you that the reason why we have this thing being open-ended here is so that you can slap whatever device and mechanism you want on top of here. In the iCards, again, I'm going to mention it later on, but in the iCards I will link uh, different builds that I have on the channel that you can stick right on top of that pillar such that the player will respawn directly inside of the chamber of those contraptions. I, I put them as separate tutorial just because uh, I didn't realize that um, I would ever have to put them together because they would be so successful, but in any case, just remember that this is the lower portion and this is the upper portion. You can mix and match with chambers, you can even design your own, that might be a fun project for you to do, but then again, always remember that this little device here is only a part of a prison. It's not the whole thing, I have another whole prison on my channel, it's called the Hermes Prison, you can check it out if you're interested, but other than that, I'll let past Alex uh, pick up where I left off. Alright everyone, to the few uh, number of individuals who stayed through the intro, I do genuinely thank you. In order to showcase this build, and by the way that's what we're doing now, I put myself into game mode survival, and because I have absolutely no friends to act as the guards, I'll be using a uh, couple set block commands to place redstone blocks to imitate uh, uh, levers being flicked. First thing to mention, of course, is that we have beacons and elder guardians to make it so that it's nearly impossible to break blocks and that the hunger damage we're taking is just about negated. I mean, completely negated. Of course, it should be said that uh, before you tell me in the comments, you know, Alex, why don't you just end or pearl out or something like that, all of the Hades and Poseidon's prisons and things, you could just drink some instant damage potions and you'd be out in a matter of seconds. But anyway, continuing in, the player walks into the prison and instantaneously blocks behind them have been placed. The only thing that is left for them to do is click on the bed, though you can't move back and click it. The only thing to do is to uh, click on the bed and set your spawn. Unfortunately, if the prisoner does not cooperate, the system doesn't work, but then again, all of the Hades and Zeus and Poseidon's vault and things, they have this as an integral part of their mechanics, and so I assume it's part of the ground rules. After the prisoner has set their spawn, again, I'm going to use those commands in order to imitate a lever being flicked, we are then pushed over into this position right here. We cannot click on the bed, we cannot mine, jump, or really do anything of the sort. We can't stand on the pressure plate or do anything. If you notice this slab here, this is actually where our guard will come and foot trap us and then kill us. Again, I'll show you that from the outside, but for now at least, we are going to kill ourselves with the slash kill command. As you can see, all of the items are dropped down onto the floor, and we respawn all the way up here. This is precisely what I was talking about and referring to separating the player's items, because it is literally impossible to throw or somehow get items inside of this upper kill chamber up here. I shouldn't say kill chamber because the goal is not to kill the player. I have tons of other designs on my channel for uh, for prison vaults and I'll leave an eye card for you to, to view them. Uh, going over to the guard chambers over here, what we can do is actually reset the system uh, just like so. 
And what I was referring to this kill chamber here is that the guards will come into here. They will kill the prisoner and also they can flick this lever uh, at uh, whenever they need to in order to pick up all of the items that the prisoner has. Uh, the next thing, by the way, when I set that redstone block and saw how we had been pushed, that is this lever right here. As soon as we press it, it, uh, it retracts this piston and uh, pushes us with this piston right here. It also closes the doors and a few, uh, few other things. As usual, I will always be uh, providing a tutorial for this build, and if you are still unclear as to why we have this massive pillar, I really want uh, you to understand. On Bedrock Edition, at least, the 1.16 made a few changes to this mechanics, and don't worry, that works 100% in 1.16 Bedrock Edition. The basic premise is that if we set our spawn on a block, and then break that block, or make the block an invalid spawn spot, the bed will spawn us at the highest vertical block. I genuinely don't think this should be in the game, but it's been around for years, I tell you. And as you can see, we're just up here. It's a bit unfortunate because it creates an infinite death loop that's rather uh, rather difficult to actually separate yourself from. But then again, if it's in the game and it's been around for long enough to not be considered an immediate bug, I think it's okay to use it. I now really appreciate you for for watching and i'll i'll begin to to set up the tutorial for Ready, everyone tutorial time we're gonna start replacing a bed down there and surrounding it with solo blocks obviously the hardest block that we're going to be using to prevent the prisoner from having any possibility of escaping is obsidian so what you're going to do is place a bed just like so and surround it in obsidian then on the pillow of the bed, you're going to place two blocks just like so, and that just obstructs the player from respawning on the pillow of the bed. Next thing we're going to do is kind of beef up the back area of the bed just so that it, it completely invalidates all of these diagonal quarter blocks. The next thing we're going to add is an iron bar in this position, and the iron bar in this position, and an iron bar in this position here. Obviously, of course, you can fill in some obsidian in those positions there and place two blocks there along with, oh, we need to get some endstone out of the creative inventory and place endstone blocks here and here. The reason why we're using endstone blocks is, well, simply because uh, they take an incredible amount of time to break and they're also movable which means that they're great in place of obsidian, which is not movable. Next thing we're going to do is place a solid block here, or obsidian, and then a pressure plate in that position there. We're going to start working on some of more of the redstone type things, and so I like to build on top of uh, on top of endstone brick, just because hey, they look a little bit menacing. And what we're going to start is by uh, actually building up the wall closing mechanism uh, for our build here. We're going to place a double set of pistons, oops, sorry, one back here and here, just like so, and just like so. And next thing we're going to add is a normal piston here. That will actually push us to the side, and we'll get to that in a second. Next thing we want to do is kind of uh, get the opening for this prison all set up in order. So we're going to start building out a small little chamber up front here and enclosing everything in obsidian. I use gold blocks there, but that's truly not necessary. Alrighty, next thing we're going to do is add some obsidian blocks here and here and here, just so that uh, the player cannot, say, jump or really do anything more than that. And after that, we are going to build an obsidian pillar on top of the iron bars. It's important that it is directly on top of the iron bars and just build it up as tall as you really feel is necessary. I would prefer at least 24 blocks just so the player dies a full damage, but uh, again, it is completely up to you. Coming down here into this lower section, we're going to start by building up some of the mechanics for how the redstone will actually play out. We're going to place uh, an obsidian block there, it has to be obsidian for uh, being non-movable, and we're going to place a redstone dust in all of these locations with, believe it or not, a redstone torch in this position here. Next thing we're going to do is place a, oops, sorry is we're going to place a torch on the underside of this block here, and then a block here, and then a torch on the underside of this block here. Next thing we are going to do is place a sticky piston in this position right here, I do believe. 
Uh, hold on, let me check things out. Nope, it actually has to be one more back so that it is powered by the redstone torch underneath. Next thing we're going to do is start getting out uh, some of these slime blocks and redstone materials. And after placing a slime block on this position, sorry. And after placing a slime block here, a redstone block here, and a slime block here, I realize, of course, that we actually need to make this block here obsidian. I'm terribly sorry for forgetting about that. It is completely uh, my fault. Next thing we're going to do is actually build up a little bit of a platform for some more redstone to go onto. And what basically what we're going to do is add an obsidian block on top of this piston and basically add a bit of redstone dust on top of it. And then now we're going to start building up the retracting block mechanism that prevents the player from, well, moving around from the kill chamber. Place a sticky piston, just like so, with a endstone block right in front of it. And basically what we're going to do is add a redstone torch onto the back of this block here, such that it inverts the signal of the torch and, well, powers that piston through redstone dust in this position here. Next thing we are going to do is add some endstone blocks carrying the redstone signal up over and all the way back till we get to the slime block formation here where we are going to add a piston in this position and a block in this position, redstone dust on top of that, a piston in this position and a redstone dust on top of that. Oh, and more redstone dust on top of here. Basically, what this system allows for is that as soon as we press these blocks into place, they'll be immediately pushed back, and then whenever these pistons extend, those will be pushed back. The mechanics of how this redstone launch work is, is irrelevant, of course, but just a basic idea is can never hurt. Moving forward into the prison, you can see that as soon as we step on these blocks, these blocks will now come in front of us, and as soon as we you know, uh, place the lever or flip the lever that I forgot to place down, let me do that uh, right now, basically the lever will go right here. This block here makes it so that the uh, prisoner is pushed through this piston into this uh, retracted block up here, such that they can now be killed inside of the kill chamber. And believe it or not, this is what we're now going to be working on. Fill the entire area up with a nice solid layer of obsidian, and now we're going to add a floor of endstone and get an endstone slab out of your inventory. Basically, what we're going to do is build on flue blocks into the floor and add the endstone here, so that the extended pistons, well, they're going to be extended. Dig down into the floor a little bit again and find your redstone dust inside of your hotbar and place two bits over there. And then for the slab, which is actually going to break line of sight, we can actually add one more sitting up there. We're going to need to add a piston in this position here with an endstone brick block there, right there, and another block here break that out and just like so you can see everything extends and contracts as necessary. Take a bit of grass and as you can see this will allow the guards and not the prisoner to access their items. Believe it or not ladies and gentlemen this system is entirely completed. I think we should do, do a nice little run through once again to make sure everything is in tip shop shape, everything there, tracks, we can sleep on the bed and with that all out of the way, I'm going to break this block, as you can see, everything's looking fine. And with that all out of the way, that's going to bring us to the end of today's video. I know it was a long one, I doubt it'll get a lot of viewership, but at the end of the day, I think this is such an amazingly cool concept and something that I really hope people should start using in their prison, just because it's a bit unfortunate how easily these things can be cracked into with improper player inventory clearing systems. Other than that, check out some more videos on my channel, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.